I fished the Grand Banks, George's Banks. I had to do a Bering Sea for quite a, a bunch of years. And, um, you know, that was the height of overfishing. There was, you know, we were pillaging the, the oceans, tearing up entire ecosystems. And I, but I was a kid, and it uh, really gave me a lot, an incredible sense of meaning to help feed my country and be on the water. And that's kind of been the goal over my whole life is how do we figure out that so people like me and other fishermen and even land-based farmers can, can have their own farms, have self-directed lives, and, and um, you know, spend their, make their livelihoods out in the water. While I was working on the Bering Sea, the, the cod stocks crashed back home where I was born in Newfoundland. And that was a real wake-up call for a whole generation of us. And so me and a bunch of people my age went on this search for sustainability. And I ended up in the uh, aquaculture farms in northern Canada because aquaculture was supposed to be the answer to overfishing, job creation. But when I got there, it was the exact opposite. It was, it was an industrial mode of for, uh, food production. We used to say we're growing neither fish nor food. So uh, I ended up here in Long Island Sound uh, as I kept searching for a new way to, to farm the ocean. And I re remade myself as a shell fisherman, and I started with oysters. And I did that for about eight years, and then the storms hit. Hurricane Irene and Hurricane Sandy were really brutal. They were, you know, they were two very hard years having the farm wiped out, 90% of my crop lost, and most of my gear. And after, uh, I think it was Irene, I went out too early to go to, sa to try to save the farm and I started pulling gear and uh, uh, I, I ended up getting blown into the rocks and had to be uh, you know, uh, saved by the Coast Guard. And that was just me just wanting to save what I had in the, in, in the face of uh, climate change. But I was farming in the wrong way then is what it turned out and that's why I had to adapt. After the storms hit, I had to reimagine what it was to be an ocean farmer. And so I began trying to grow different species, species that were more resilient, um, species that were actually more affordable to grow. And I lifted my farm off bottom using the entire water column, which made me resilient to storm surges. And I started growing species that were restorative, uh, like oysters, but many, many more. And the idea was really how many different species can we grow in a 20 acre area. And the idea is just to make this as affordable as possible for farmers to, to do and do themselves. So it's just minimal skills and, and minimal capital costs. I'm saying this is, we think of this as the nail salon model of the sea. And simplicity is really the secret to replication. You know, you, you come out on the farm and there's kind of nothing to see. But, you know, that's a good thing. It's all underwater, low aesthetic impact, small footprint. Um, but if you can imagine an underwater garden. So the farm it is, imagine a sort of simple scaffolding system underwater where you have hurricane proof anchors on the edges and then just about eight feet below the surface you have a horizontal rope. And we, so we'll have our kelp growing vertically um, uh, down on the lines next to scallops and lantern nets, next to mussels and mussel socks and then below the surface we have oyst our oysters in cages and clams down in the mud. We decided on 3D ocean farming because it's an idea, I think, that captures people's imagination. They don't know what it is at first, but it gets them to lean forward. I'm taking some of this slack to like right here. The growing season, uh, kelp is a winter crop. It's why we love it. It goes in post-hurricane season, one of the fastest growing plants on Earth. Um, so we seed that around November, and it, it grows. We start harvesting in the spring. We pull the kelp off the lines to process, and right then, 
we have muscle sets, little muscle seeds that come and attach to those old pieces of the kelp stems. And they grow out and we take that seed and put them in muscle socks and we attach those muscle socks to those old kelp lines. So really efficient use of gear. The scallops, we're harvesting those in as many scallops, again, just before kelp comes. Oysters are year round and then clams are mainly in the spring and summer. So we're able to harvest something all year round. We have diversification, which reduces risk for us as farmers if one of our uh, crops fail. Regenerative agriculture to me is trying to answer the question of how do we farm the ocean in a different way? How do we revive ecosystems through our farming methods? So my job isn't to save the seas. It's because Mother Nature, millions of years ago, created two technologies actually designed to mitigate our harm, shellfish and seaweeds. A shellfish, our oysters soak up uh, uh, incredible amounts of nitrogen. They filter over 50 gallons of water a day. Our kelp soaks up five times more carbon than land-based plants. I mean, there are studies coming out that says if you were to have farms covering 6% of the oceans, you could capture all the carbon that's currently put out by humanity and feed the planet.